You're listening to Woodland Walks, a podcast from the Woodland Trust, presented by Adam Shaw. We protect woods and plant trees for wildlife, for people. Well, I am very lucky. On a day in which it has been raining almost right across Scotland, I found a rare, dry, even vaguely sunny spot, actually. I'm in a place called Shieldig, which is on the northwest coast of Scotland. Um, It's a very small place. My landlady says there's 110 people here. It was founded in 1800, and it was really done to train seamen up for the war against Napoleon. And once that was done and Napoleon was sent off to Elba, the community turned itself into a fishing village. And its name actually uh, translates in Old Norse into Herring Bay, uh, Shieldig meaning Herring Bay. Um, And this is really the base from which they're going to try and transform a whole landscape here into a new wooded uh, area. And I've come to meet uh, my main guide for the day, who's the project development manager at Ben Shieldig, who's Malcolm Turner, and he's around here. So I've just got to find him. Hi, you're Malcolm. Yes, that's right. Good. Hi, Adam. <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> very nice, very quiet this morning, and the weather is... It's, well, it's not quite shining, but it's it's good, isn't it? It's calm, there's no wind. I mean, this is uh, not your normal West Coast weather, <laughs> shall we say. I was just saying how beautiful the, the the view is from here. Just tell me a bit about the island right it's in amazing, front of us. Yeah. Well, the, the island, Shieldig Island, is um, it's owned by the National Trust for Scotland. It was actually planted with, with pine uh, back in 1800 uh, to make masts for, for boats at the time. Uh, the the um, Napoleonic Wars were obviously a big driver for building the village uh, and creating the sailors to fight Napoleon's navies. Uh, and the, the island was part of that. So today it's, it's been untouched since then, basically. So it's a fantastic <coughs> breeding ground for, for sea eagles, uh, which, is, which is great. And there's, there's a wee eaglet there at the moment. So, wow. Yeah. So poking its head uh, above the village is the mountain we're going to see. Tell me a bit about it. That's right. That's Ben Shieldig right behind the village here. So the mountain itself is part of Ben Shieldig Estate, uh, which the Trust purchased this year in March. Um, it's 4,000 acres of really amazing you know, variety of habitats. So Shieldig Woods is, is two areas of ancient woodland. One is a birch woodland and the other ancient Caledonian pine wood. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic mountain um, that, that we're really looking forward to getting started on. It looks very steep. Are, are we gonna, we're not going to climb to the top. I don't think so today. Uh, it is really steep, although there's a nice gentle sort of ascent at the back. Um, it's over 500 metres, but yeah, as you, as you can see from here, it's, it's, it's this really sort of emblematic sandstone that you get in the area, sitting on top of Lewisian Nice, which you get in the, the sort of tar- Torridon landscape. And, and that's what makes it so, so renowned, basically, and loved by climbers and hikers all over. We've got a lot to do today. Mm -hmm. You're going to take me to one stop to give me a sort of visit, a a general view of the area. Just tell me where we're going now. So we're going up to the top of Glen Shieldig. So that will give us a nice vantage point to look back down the Glen, see the Caledonian pine wood at the far end, see what some of our neighbours have been doing in terms of woodland creation, and then to see the landscape in terms of what we we hope to achieve in the future. Great. We're driving to begin with. That's right, yeah. Just a few minutes in the car, and then we'll get you on your feet and and hiking through the pine wood. Let's go. Well, we're on the lower slopes of Ben Shieldig now. I've got to say, there's no obvious path up, and I'm not sure I'd tackle it on my own as I'd probably get lost or something. But anyway, meeting me here is another local expert. In fact, the site manager uh, from the Woodland Trust, Donnie Chisholm, and he's going to guide us to the top, or as near to the top as I'm going to make it today. Anyway, off we go. While the view is spectacular here, the only problem is the midges. I've got to say, it's not as bad as I've seen elsewhere in Scotland, but the moment you stop walking, they just seem to gather around you. I do seem to be able to outpace them. So as long as I walk, as I continue walking, they disappear. So, well, onwards and upwards. So we've got, it looked like we were at the top 
of this mountain. But Donny tells me, how, how far up are we? Yeah, just under halfway. <laughs> yeah. One thing I have to say is that while I'm using every limb, Donny has not unfolded his arms. It, it, it's like it's a Sunday morning stroll. I'm not entirely sure he's not related to mountain goats. Um, anyway, uh, so that, there you can see, just to paint a picture of the competency of us both, uh, we've taken a pause uh, because we're we're surround we're in a little clearing and it was very steep actually a sort of gully uh, down. Um, we've taken a pause just to talk about some of the the granny pines. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. There's just a a few very nice examples around us here. So, so just explain to me what I mean about these trees and what makes them so appealing. You can talk whilst I'll <laughs> take a breathe breath. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, well, a good description we heard of. Um, uh, it's one of the, the the tour bus drivers that comes through here uh, was telling people that they're like the uh, broccoli trees, yeah. um, the kind of classic big heavy trunk and like a lot of a lot of foliage. Yeah, the yeah, it's a it's a very particular shape, isn't it? I mean, often we think of pine, sort of conical, quite tight, but this is actually very it's broad. Um, th- th- it's actually it's not a h- huge amount of leaves. It's it's quite spindly and skeletal I- in a way. Is that no? You're shaking your head. I've described that wrongly. Okay, correct me. Tell me what what I've done wrong there. Yeah. Well, the the type you talk about, you talk about them being type B, which um, it's basically a wolf tree. Um, so it, it's it's very vigorous and aggressive. So it's quite chunky. It's not actually spindly. It, like it's got a lot of branches, a lot of very heavy branches. Uh, and the one for you know, if you're talking about timber uh, for Scots pine, you want type A, which is the classic kind of you know nice triangular shape. Um, and they'll both always grow in that form, no matter how you treat them. Um, so if you grow type B tight, where you would normally expect it to kind of force some apical dominance in it, it just won't for you. It'll spread out and dominate other things. Uh, and a type A, if you grow it open, where you'd expect it to spread out, it won't. It'll just stay right. apically dominant, nice and pointy, and and then. Um, uh, so the granny pines were, this is, you know, theory that I subscribe to anyway, that, that, that they were the ones that were left behind because all the good trees were cut out of the stand, you know, the ones that were used for ships, masts and so on. Um, but when you look at them from a biodiversity point of view, they've got far more surface areas, a lot more nooks and crannies for things to live in. So, you know, sort of ecological point of view, that there's, there's um, you know, a lot of benefit in having them in, in the stand and they're really nice to look at, so... And you, you talk about this being a granny pine, but am I right in saying a, a granny pine isn't a type of tree? It's, it's just a name you give to an old pine, or is that, am I wrong there as well? No, you're right. It, it's pretty much a nickname you, you, that, that these kind of old trees um, have. They are old uh, because they were you know, left behind for whatever reason, hence the granny. But the, you know, it, it ends up being a nickname for this kind of tree. How old do you reckon a tree like this is? Yeah, hundreds of years. Hundreds of um, years. Yeah. You, you know you can make it up, and I won't know any better. It's 4,000 years old, Adam. Uh, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> it's, it's an old tree. It's an old tree. Because we've stopped, I'm being attacked again. <laughs> They're now gone into my eye. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Now, this really is a breathtaking part of the Northwest Highlands, and I know you can't see it right now, but I do encourage you to look at the Woodland Trust website and they've got some pictures, which I think do show some justice here to what is just an astounding landscape. It's also special because it's the first mountain the Woodland Trust has bought and tried to, to develop. Uh, it is home to two very different ancient woodlands. Uh, one is really a survivor of the time when the west coast of Scotland was, well, it was one big rainforest. Um, so we've got one area of Caledonian pine wood, and the other bit of woodland here is native birch wood, which we're going to get to later, which I understand has an amazing amount of mosses and lichens as well. And their lineage dates back to, well, the end of the last ice age. So we're talking about 10,000 years ago. So not only is this spectacular, but it has an, an unbelievably important part, a place in the in the geological and the natural history of this area of the country. So beautiful and important, and that's why this really is a, a, a very special place indeed. 
One thing I've got to ask you about, which has always puzzled me about the, the, the geology of Scotland, is that you often see these very bold rock outcrops, or something so, as if something just got thrust through the landscape. And we're seeing that here. You see these very stereotypical Scottish mountains and hills. Uh, now, why does that happen? What is the ge geological explanation of all of that? So a rock being forced up, and that's how you can see, like over towards uh, Tiabig there, you can see the strata of the rock running uh, diagonally, not lying flat, like it would have been laid down, but it's, you know, a funny angle because it got thrust up. But then, like, it's a heavily glaciated landscape as well, so it's been worn down, so that's why the mountains aren't, you know, the same size as the Himalayas, for right. example, you know. Okay. Um, and is that, so the glacial sort of experience of, of this landscape, is that why we see these big boulders we've, well, I've been clambering over, you've been sort of sprinting across them, but it's, is, is that the reason for this? Yeah, 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 so that's erratics that are, are sort of dropped off by the glacier, right. uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I mean, this, this it's, I guess when you're looking at the landscape, this is this is really unique up here. This is why a lot of people come here to climb the mountains because you've got this. The Torridon Mountains are, are basically made of sandstone, um, which is sitting on top of Lewisian Nice, which is one of the oldest rocks in the world. And and that's not normal. Usually you've got just large sections of Lewisian Nice. So it's sort of inverted after, what's it called, Donnie? The Moynian Thrust? Moynian Thrust. Moin thrust. Yeah. I'm a that very amateur geologist, but it is really amazing when you look around the landscape, and that, that's you know what a lot of formed Ben Shieldig as well is the the, the sandstone. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really had a huge impact on on the the habitats here. So in geological terms, it's had a a really exciting history. It's been underwater. It's, there's been glaciers through here. There's been geological forces thrusting rock up. That's what's that's what's formed this landscape. Yeah, and and that's. Well, you've got such unique biodiversity here. I mean, just looking at the, the Caledonian pine wood there, you know, I mean, what's really interesting about that is that it really started after the end of the last ice age, as the ice retreated, you had this spread of Caledonian pine. And then that, that gradually shrank back. So, so you're really looking at one of the, the sort of last remnants of an 8,000 year old woodland, you know, which is incredible to think of it. Yeah. So the, the geology around here really is amazing. I mean, you know, when you look up just a bit further north, you know, up at Olipu, which is not that far away, you've got Knock and Crag, which really demonstrated the um, the, the thrust. And, 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 you know, the two Victorians arrived. They saw this old rock sitting on top of young rock, and they realized, you know, that the, the rocks actually moved, and that changed the whole world's understanding of, of geology. So, you know, when, when you come back to Shieldig, you really see some of the geology at play and how it's impacted the landscape here, and that's really exciting. Yeah, because so th literally a couple of Victorians turn up and see old rock on top of young rock, which is the wrong way round. So realise rock bus must be moving. So, so this landscape informed the whole world's understanding of geology. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's a big thing. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Too complicated to fit on a, a car bumper sticker, but something to be proud of. <laughs> something to be proud of. That's an amazing thing. Well, just you, you can imagine. I hope people listening will imagine the amazing sort of landscape that exists here you've got all these different types of rock different habitats of trees uh, and, it, and it really makes this sort of rich mosaic uh, uh, in the landscape so it's 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 amazing yeah and one can only imagine the sort of the shock and confusion of the victorians who turn up to this landscape and go this challenges our understanding of the world and, and therefore change that understanding that's that's a momentous thing yeah absolutely Well, I've just come down from Ben Shieldig, from our hike up the mountain, to the shores of the loch. It's an amazing picture postcard view. There is Shieldig Island, there is Shieldig the village, there is the loch, of course, and to the left, there is the Torridon mountain range, famous uh, for hikers, and it gets covered in snow in winter, although today is amazingly balmy and beautiful. Well, we're off to a slightly different part of the forest now. We're going to go down the road and up another, what I would call a mountain, but what everyone else seems to call a hill here, but they are made of sterner stuff than me. So, off we go. So we've, we're not far from the road here. We've walked up a very steep hill into a bit of landscape which is completely and utterly green. Every bit of ground is covered with some sort of vegetation, moss, lichen, all sorts of uh, 
growth, which I, to be honest, I have no idea what's growing here, uh, but these guys will absolutely know. Uh, why is it, apart from the fact that it genuinely looks beautiful, why is it uh, that you've brought me up here, Malcolm? Well, we wanted to show you a, a, a quite special section of the Atlantic rainforest, um, or temperate rainforest as it's known, which occurs in places along the west coast of Scotland. Um, it was actually really widespread at one point, and you, you would have it all along Scotland's coastline. But it's it's just it's a it's a it's a really unique type of habitat, um, which only occurs in these conditions. So where the the, the climate is mild, um, where the air is really clean, and where it's wet, which of course it is for a lot of the time. Um, so you get this incredibly lush vegetation uh, all around. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a really special piece of woods. And Donny, I think when people think about rainforest they think of brazil uh, they don't think of of scotland so what makes a rainforest a rainforest the climate really it's as malcolm was saying it's um sort of warm and wet well <laughs> you got donny's moved ahead um he continues to jump over these rocks like some giant mountain goat uh, you could hear the balls there could you, as he tried to work out how to explain to me in simpler terms that a rainforest is a place where it rains a lot. Um, I'm not sure he's too impressed with my knowledge. Uh, anyway, uh, Malcolm. Malcolm is keeping pace with me. Um, uh, Malcolm, um, w what else makes this environment so good for this, for this kind of forest? The, the Gulf Stream has a, a fair amount to do with it passing by here. It creates this, these warm conditions where you did have rainforest then able to thrive along the west coast as it, you know, where it touches Scotland and comes right, right past. So. And as you, as you develop this site, are you hoping to create more of this sort of habitat? Absolutely. Um, you know, birch is a, is a pioneer species and it, it, it's key for sort of uh, really creating the right conditions for, for growth of other types of trees in the future. So, um, you know, this is primarily birch woodland here so we'll certainly look to to expand on that um you say the, the best sort of trainer i've ever had are these midges because every time you stop walking they start biting so this it's like shouting at you keep going boy keep going um they don't seem to to bite if you walk that's right isn't it <laughs> yeah, well, they they follow, but maybe uh, they've not enough time to tell their pals that no, you can't fly past them. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Word has got around. My hands covered in them. Uh, uh, let, let's walk on. Let's walk on. Great. Well, I'm just kind of, I'm sort of. It's very hard. This. I'm trying to hold the microphone, and actually, I can't quite walk up this. So I'm on almost all fours, trying to climb up this bit of. Uh, the hill here, because just ahead of us, I can see a rather nice waterfall. And that's going to be my target. <laughs> Whether I'm going to make it or not, I'm going to lose the microphone or lose me. I don't know, but it looks, it looks fantastic. So we're trying. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, guys, uh, it is sort of the end of the day. Um, can I just say, I have had one of the best days I've ever had. I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't say that ever. I've been to many places in the world. This is absolutely amazing. And I think what's extraordinary is that people from around the world would come here. And most people in the UK haven't. Uh, anyway, don't, don't, don't you find that odd, Donny? <laughs> I guess I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> <laughs> is, that is, is that what everyone says? <laughs> yeah. I'm quite happy that it's a well-kept secret. Yeah. yeah, it's just you. We'll tell everyone it's rubbish, so Donny can have this yeah. this wilderness to himself. Um, well, it's been amazing. I mean, we are sitting. You may hear some water in the background. We're sitting on a waterfall. Malcolm's legs are dangling over more than mine because he's braver. Uh, I'm clinging on a bit more. If only you could see this. Uh, two relaxed guys and a sort of panicky one in the middle. Uh, anyway, it it is beautiful. Thank you, thank you very much for, for doing this. This is quite an adventure, uh, Malcolm, that you and your team are just now embarking on. How do you, how do you feel about the task ahead? <laughs> uh, well, we're really excited, Adam. I mean, this is great. It's great to get a chance to show you around today, you know, to really get a feel for the estate here and, and, and for the, you know, the potential and, and sort of what we're planning. So, um, yeah, we're really keen to get going, to be honest. 
Um, yeah. So, I mean, one thing we've not talked about is is the, the sort of wider potential to to really link up what we're doing on Ben Shielding with with our neighbours and you know with other estates and looking at woodland creation on a sort of landscape scale, um, and that's really exciting. You know, there's a lot of potential there for for preserving not just the habitats on Ben Shieldig, but but you know the, the wider Wester Ross landscape for generations to come. Well, it's amazing. I'm definitely going to be back at bed and breakfast, getting lost, and probably calling you on my mobile, going, I- "I'm near a tree and a bit of green. Can you tell me which way I should <laughs> should be going?" So expect a confused phone call from me. You, you'll be you'll be you'll be running up the hills in half the time next time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Well, thank you, thank both of you very much indeed. And if you do get a chance. Do come and visit uh, the Woodland Trust site. But even if you can't, do have a look at our photos. And uh, do, as ever, send in your tips about the Woodland Walks you've been on. Either just send me an email or, indeed, your own audio recording. But I'll leave you now with the sound of the babbling brook. Now, how do I get down from here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Woodland Trust podcast, Woodland Walks with Adam Shaw. Join us next month when Adam will be taking another Woodland Walk in the company of Woodland Trust staff and volunteers. Don't forget to subscribe to the series on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And do give us a rating and a review. And why not send in a recording of your own favourite Woodland Walk to be included in a future podcast? Do keep it to a maximum of five minutes and please tell us what makes your Woodland Walk special. Or send us an email with your thoughts about your favourite walks that you've been on and what makes them special for you. You can send your thoughts and any audio files to podcast at woodlandtrust.org.uk. We look forward to hearing from you.